Good day, grade 2 planners. Welcome to today's lesson on mathematical literacy. This lesson is proudly brought to you by the Northern Cape Department of Education in collaboration with Pagama Research and Development. My name is Milton Gomo. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at paper one revision. What? So we're going to be doing this revision in parts. Okay, so our today's lesson is in part one, paper one. Remember that we are now preparing for our prelims, so we don't uh, have time to uh, waste. We need all the time to prepare. Let's consider that uh, these papers are all written uh, in different uh, days, so we need to make sure that we prepare that one so that uh, whichever paper that we write on the day, we are well prepared. Okay, let's go through the objectives of the day. Right, the objectives of the day. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to answer all paper one questions. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to answer all paper one questions. Right, the paper consists of five questions. Question one, we've got multiple choice questions, and these will be on finance and data handling. Okay. Then question two, we're going to be doing finance. So the questions are going to be on finance. All right. Question three, questions are on data handling. All right. Then question four and five. This is integration of uh, finance, data handling, and probability. So let us uh, make sure that we put all our equipment in place. That is uh, the calculators that we need, uh, the workbooks, so that uh, as we move on to the lesson, we're all part of the lesson. Remember that uh, math is all about doing it practically. Wherever we are, this is the time for us to get busy and start working. 10 questions. Whatever question are given, make sure that you start by what? Attempting it. Don't just wait for corrections. Try it best. Then from where you left, you can actually see where you were wrong and where you were right and how you are supposed to make it better next time. So this is what is very important. Okay, right, start off by question one. Question one, uh, this question is on tariffs. This question is on tariffs. Right. Uh, let's look at that question together and try to understand what the question is about and what we're supposed to do. Right. Let's look at our table. It says, the electricity tariffs in the municipality area where Jane lives is charged according to usage on a sliding scale, indicated by what? Blocks in the table shown, okay? So we've got blocks one to four, as you can see there. And then now in the next column, each block is given its uh, price, okay? Uh, percent, right? That is per kilowatt hour, right? And then it says that all prices include VAT at uh, 15%, okay? At 15%. Right. I think by now we are now uh, we are aware of what uh, VAT means. Okay, this one is what is called uh, the value what added what tax the value added tax. That's a VAT. Okay. Right. Block number one. Okay. What are you having there? We're having uh, less than fifty kilowatt hour. Okay. What's the price? Remember the price there is given in cent per kilowatt hour. So we've got 96.61 cents, okay, per kilowatt hour. Okay, that's block number one. Let's go to block number two, right? Uh, this case is greater than what? 50 kilowatt hour, but less than 400 kilowatt hour, okay? What's the price take for this one? Is 125.21, okay? Cents per kilowatt hour, all right? Then block number three, we're given what? Uh, is greater than what? 400 kilowatt hour, but less than what? 600 kilowatt hour, All right? What's the price for that one? Is 206.56 cents per kilowatt hour, All right? Let's go to the last block, which is block number four. This one is more than 600 kilowatt hour, All right? Again, let's look at the price that's given there is what? 354.85 cents per kilowatt hour. Right. First question says, calculate the rate in rents. Right? That Jane paid for the first 50 kilowatt 
hour she used in September 2023, which means we're looking at uh, the last year's tariffs in this case for J. Okay, right. Then number 1.2, it says, determine the total amount Jane paid for the first 50 kilowatt hour used. And always make sure that you check the mark allocation. It's two marks uh, per each question given there. Two marks per each, each word question given there. Right, let's start off by looking at the first question, question 1.1, okay? Calculate the rate in what? In rents that Jane paid. For the first 50 watt kilowatt hour she used in September 2023. Where are we? Right? Uh, for the first 50 kilowatt hour. So uh, the price that is given there for that uh, 50 kilowatt hour, that's uh, it lies in block number one with a price take of 96.61 cent per kilowatt hour. Right? But that's not the rate. Okay? For the rate there, what you need to do? We have to divide that 96.61 by what? Okay, for our rate. Okay, then what we get in that case, our rate there is uh, 0 0.9661 rands per kilowatt hour. Remember that you were told to make sure that you leave your answer in rands. So it's very important to check all the information given there so that you don't uh, go wrong. Okay, so that's our 1.1. Okay, let's go to 1.2. Determine the total amount Jane paid for the first 50 kilowatt hour used. And then I give it to Max again. Right, so what we need to know now, we have to uh, calculate the total amount Jane paid for the first 50 kilowatt hour used. Okay, how much did she pay? Okay, there we are. Right, remember that this 0 0.9661 rands is only for one kilowatt hour. All right, but in this case, we're given 50 kilowatt hours. So what do we do? Apply that rate for one uh, kilowatt hour by what? 50 kilowatt hours. What we get now, if we calculate, right, we get 48 rands, let's say, okay? So that's total amount that Jane paid for the first 50 kilowatt hour. All right, I'm sure uh, you'll be able to uh, attempt such questions as you meet them in your paper one. All right, let's move on to the next question, which is question number two. All right, Jane is a 63 year old educator at Plain High School. That's the old man, okay? He earns 43,500 a month. Then he contributes. 7.5% of his gross salary towards his pension fund every month. Underline the statement. Every month. He contributes every month. Then he has a medical cover for the following people. So we're talking about Jerry. He's an educator. And then Jerry is what? It's a 63 year old. And then also uh, he is having some what? Contributions that he does every month. Each month, he contributes what? 7.5% of his salary towards his pension fund. How much is he being paid per month? 43,500 rands. Okay? Besides that, Jerry, oh, I mean, Jerry also has got what? Uh, a medical, uh, which includes the given people, right? The first one is 83 year old mother, Nandi. Who else is within that cover? His 65 year old wife, maybe Zena. Right. Then he also has got uh, two grandchildren, Tandega and Sefat. Right. So these four people are under his medical cover, which means every month he first of all contributes what? 7.5% of his salary towards his pension fund. And also contributes towards his medical cover for all those four given dependents. Okay. It says, use the information given on the table below. Let's check the table. Right, we're given a table there. That's a text table where we're given the information that we need to use. The rebates are given there, okay? And also the what? Text of income, right? And then the range of the rates, okay? According to each what? Taxable income, okay? Which means in that case, if we just look at that table, 
if somebody's get is, is being paid up to 216,200 okay what is the rate of that tax for that amount which is being paid to us that person okay which means in that case he is going to be taxed at what 18 percent right. of his what income right so what you need to do there whenever given such uh, a temple you check the information given check the amount of salary that's being paid to that person and check where it lies within that range okay somebody I'm being, suppose i'm being paid eight hundred thousand. okay which means in this case i'm going to lie within that range of seven hundred eighty two thousand two hundred and one to one million seven fifty six thousand six hundred right then how much, how much should be the tax for that one we check the rights of that tax it's going to lie within that range where it says twenty twenty nine thousand and eighty nine right plus four one percent of tax of income above seven hundred eight two thousand two hundred and then in that case my salary will be above that seven hundred eight two thousand two hundred which means it's going to lie in that taxable income range okay then also check the ages okay if the person not dealing with in this case is less than what uh 65 is going to be uh, under that primary rebet okay and then uh if he's 65 year uh 65 years and older it's going to lie within that uh age group and with the uh, what a tax uh fee of what uh that amount okay and that amount up to you got what last part 75 and what and older which means 75 years and older you also going to check on which uh rebate does that person uh, lie into okay all right let's move on as we look at jerry's uh problems here right two point one calculate jerry's annual income we'll give it two marks okay two point two jerry had to calculate his monthly tax and he said that he is contributing one thousand and one thousand seven hundred what and ninety one thousand seven hundred and ninety okay per month that's what he came up came out with after calculations right and then they conclude that every month okay he contributes what one thousand seven hundred what and ninety need what to do need to verify that statement verify that statement so I'm going to give you five minutes to work on that one. Then we come up uh, with our questions as we discuss it together. Five minutes, then we uh, move on. Right, welcome back. Let's look at uh, the first question, 2.1. I'm sure that you were able to uh, attend that question and came up with the correct answers. Okay, two point one. Let's find out. Calculate what Jerry's annual income two max. Annual that weight annual. Start from there. It's very important for you to understand the question by understanding understanding what the meaning of the statement given. So understand the question by reading carefully. Find out the correct information given within that statement and be able to understand it, analyze it. Know what you're supposed to do before you do it, okay? So those keywords like annual, you're supposed to know the meaning of annual. Annual means what? Pay year, okay? Pay year. So now it says that calculate what? Jerry's annual income, which means calculate how much does Jerry get over a period of one year. All right. Remember that we're given in the information that Jerry is getting paid 43,500 per month. Now, how much is that per year? Remember, a year is got a month, 12 months. So what do you do? We simply say 43,500 times what? Then what do you get there? You get what? 522,000. So which means uh, in a year, Jerry is being paid Five hundred what twenty-two thousand. Okay, so that's the answer for two point one. Two point two. Jerry calculated what his monthly tax and said he will contribute one thousand seven hundred and what ninety. 
Let's verify this statement. How true is it? Was Jerry correct after his calculation? Or was Jerry not correct? Okay, let's find out. Remember that Jerry contributes what? A certain portion of his salary towards what? His pension fund. Okay? How much that portion? Is 7.5 what? Percent. So, let's find out the exact amount that Jerry contributes towards what? His pension what? Using that percentage given there in our calculations. So we need to find 7.5% of Jerry's salary, which is what? 43,500. Remember that the percentage means that we are dividing by 100, which means we are just saying 7.5 over 100 times 43,500. Then we get the amount that Jerry contributes towards what? His special part. Let's do that. What do you get there? We are getting 3,262.50 cents. So this is the exact amount that Jerry contributes, right? Towards his pension fund. Which means that once he receives that for 3,500, what does it do first? First of all, removes 3,262.50, right? Then what is left is his what? Uh, is he, his income, all right? So that's what... Uh, he gets okay right so this one is the monthly monthly amount that what jerry contributes towards what pension fund so in a year how much does he contribute remember like i said a year is quarter many months 12 months so what do we do here in this case multiply the amount that jerry contributes in a month times the total number of months in a year which is 12 what we get in that case, we get what? We get uh, 39,150, which means throughout the year, if I calculate all the amounts that Jerry contributes monthly towards this what patient fund is going to be equivalent to 39,150. All right. So now we know how much he contributes per year towards what is uh pension fund let's move on all right if we were to look at what is taxable income let's check out now okay which means remember we say that pay pay which is annually jerry is being paid what is being paid 522 000 right and then now pay jerry contributes what that nine thousand what 152 what to his pension what? Pension fund. Okay? So these are the amounts per year. Pay year, how much is he being paid? 522,000. Right? And then pay year, how much is he contributing towards his pension fund? Is what? 39,150. Okay? So now, how much is he left with pay year after? Okay? After contributing his patient what? Funds. Okay? He gets what? He's left with what? 482,850, which means this is the amount which is, is he is left with after contributing towards what? Patient fund. After one year. Okay? I'm going to use that amount. Just 482,850. As what? As his testable income. So now we need to go and check within that table our test table and check in which range does this amount 482,850 lie. Okay? Let's check there. Okay? And the first one is 1 216,200. No. It doesn't fit there. Right? Again, 1 216,201 to 337,800. No. Still not the one because uh, the amount that's being paid per year is still more than uh, given within that range. Let's check the next one. 337,801 to 467,500. Let's qualify there. No, it doesn't. Why? Because uh, still this amount, 467,500, is still less than 482,850. So it doesn't lie within that range. Let's continue checking. Okay? There it is. 
does it lie within that range? Yes, it lies within that range. Okay, so now we check the text. Okay, uh, text rate within that range, the it is 110,739 plus the 6% of text income above 467,500. In this case, this amount is above what? 467,500. Okay, so we use that one is our range of the tax. Okay, right. Uh, what then happens? We now know that his tax of income is what? 182,850, right? So we're going to use that rate of the tax, right? 110,739 plus 482,850 minus 467,501, supposed to be 501 there, 167,501, okay? What we get in that case, let's separate those, right? What are we having? We're having uh, 482, 482,000, right? And what? 850, right? Minus uh, 467, 501, okay? What you get there, right? That's uh, 1,534, okay? Well, that's what we have there. Yes, 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 that's what we have there, okay? Yes, 1,534.9, okay? Then I'm going to add that one to what? Uh, 110,000. Remember that now before we add, we say that what we got there is what? 1,000, what? 534.9, okay? Then now times what? This is percent of that uh, amount. We get what? 5,526. 5, we add that amount to this one, which is 110,739. What we get from there? We get what? Uh, 116,265, right? Then from there, what we do? We go back to the debate and check it out. In which repeat does Jerry lie? Okay, right. We're given three of them there. First one is the primary repeat for the age less than 65. In that case, that's Mr. Jerry. Okay, because he's what? He's 63 years old. He lies in that primary repeat of less than what? 65. Therefore, it's going to be a minus of what? 15,714, which is this one. Okay. Then what we get with there when we subtract, we get uh, 100,551, okay? So that is the amount for the uh, whole year, but one to find the one for monthly. How much is it being taxed monthly? So what do we do? We divide again by 12. Remember, a year is called 12, right? Then what we get in that case, we get 8,379.25, okay? So that's the amount uh, Mr. Jerry is being uh, taxed, right? Monthly, okay? Let's move on to question number three. Start the information below on the number of special needs schools and number of designated full service schools from the nine provinces and answer questions that follow, right? Which are those provinces they are given? Eastern Cap, Free State, Limbobo, Mate, KwaZulu Natal. Kumalana, Northwest, Northern Cape, and Western Cape. Okay? Right. Now, we're given the number of schools, right? Per each province. They are separated into what? Into two categories. The first one is the number of special needs schools. Second one, number of designated full service schools. Right. The first one is in Cape. It's got our main. 43, number of special needs schools and 30 number of designated full service schools. So you just look at that table, uh, read throughout it, understand it, be able to analyze it, so that you're able to attempt the questions that are given for that table. Right, let's move on. Question number three, it says 3.1, write down the total number of special needs schools in South Africa. So I'm going to be giving you uh, 
a minute for each question. After one minute, we check out the uh, correct one so that we move together. All right. So a minute for this one. Uh, let's look at it. So you have to do it uh, in a proper way, okay? 3.1 says, write down the total number of special needs schools in South Africa. Total means how many are they all together? The overall, okay? Special needs schools. So it's very important to uh, understand the word, the statement. The special needs schools it means that you're going to go straight to the corner of the word special needs schools. Then what are you supposed to do? Write down the total number of special needs schools in South Africa, which means we are going to add all those uh, numbers that are given in that. Uh, then you write down your answer. Let's add. The first one is what? 43 plus uh, 21 plus uh, 34 plus 149 plus uh, 72 plus uh, 20 plus 32, plus 11, and plus what? 83, okay? What's the total in that case? The total is what? Is 465. So in this case, we've got what? 465, okay? Right, let's check out our answer. If it's correct, uh, verify. Like I said, that you need to have what? Your own calculator with you. Be able to use a calculator. Always work out things on your own. Try things on your own. So that during the exam time, you won't start it because you are used to doing things on your own, okay? So that's the answer, okay? So all together, how many schools are to year in SA? Which schools? The special needs schools, that's 465. All right, 3.2, again, you have a minute to do it on your own, then we'll look at it together, right? Arrange the number of special needs schools in descending order. There it is, that word. First of all, need to what? Define that word. Know what it means. Okay? Descending, it means that we are having uh, this uh, what trend or pattern, right? Decreasing, right? From highest to lowest. Highest to what? To lowest. Okay? From the top to the bottom. That is to descend. Okay? That's to descend. Then the opposite of descend is to what? To ascend. When they're ascending, you're what? Rising up. Okay? From the bottom to the top. But if you're descending, you are what? Uh, moving from the what? From the top to the bottom. Okay? So you have to arrange these numbers from the highest to the lowest. Okay? Which uh, numbers are talking about? The special needs schools. There we are. Let's look at that corner. I'm supposed to look at that corner. Okay? From the highest value to the lowest. Okay? Right, let's check it out. What you wrote. Okay, there it is. The first one is 149, followed by what? 83, followed by what? 72, followed by what? 43. Then comes what? 34, 32, 21, 20, and the lowest is what? Is 11. That's the smallest one. The highest is what? 149. That's the biggest one. So we've just arranged those in descending order. Okay, and two marks for that one. Okay, three point three. Calculate the value of E, the number of designated full service schools in Wazul Natal. Okay, so we need to find the number of what designated what full service schools in KZN. All right, and that number is symbolized by E. So you have to calculate the unknown value E. A minute, then we do it together. Try it quickly. Right, I hope you are done with that one. Let's look at it together. The value of E. Right, if you check closely with that, within that column, we're already given the what? Total number of uh, the full service schools, right? It's what? 675. That's total. It means that it also includes the value of what? Of E there, right? So now we need to find out. What do we need to do? What do you think? Right, let's find out. 
if your thinking is correct. Right. We have to do this. Okay. Let's go back there. Right. This, that's where we are. Now we know that if you add all these values in that column, in that uh, value of E, we get what? 6 and 5. First of all, let's add all those values that are given. We exclude what? E. And check how much do we get. Okay. The first one is 30 plus what? 175 plus what? Uh, 17 plus uh, 19 plus uh, 1. 40, I skipped E there, because you know the value, right? Plus 182, plus uh, 12, plus what? Plus 40, right? What am I getting? I'm getting 615, I'm getting 615, right? So, which means those values, excluding what? Excluding E, they give us a total of what? Of uh, 615, right? Now, if we include E, they give us what? A value of what? Of 675. What then do we do to get E? We are going to say, therefore, E is equal to 675 minus 615. Right? What we get there? Let's find out. 675 minus 615. What we get? We get 60. Right? That's equal to 60. Therefore, what's the value of E? It means that our E is equal to 60. Now, if you add those values, what do you get? We get 675. Okay? That's the value of E. Okay? Write down corrections and make sure that you don't uh, make a mistake in such questions when you meet them in paper one. Okay? 3.4. Express the total number of schools in Northwest as a percentage of total number of schools in South Africa. You are supposed to make sure that these schools, we express them in the percentage. Okay? First of all, let's find out where is Northwest. There it is. Right. Not that in this case we are asked to find the what total number of schools in what in Northwest, which means these schools we are going to what add the number of what special needs schools, right? And the number of what full service schools. Okay. All those are going to give us what. The total number of schools in Northwest. What do we do first? Find out the what? Total number of schools in Northwest. How many are there? 32 plus 182. Where is the 2 coming from? Okay. 32 is the number of special needs schools in Northwest. Do you see that? Right. Where does 182 come from? 182 is the number of full service schools in Northwest. Right. So we add those two what do we get? 114, which means total number of schools in Northwest is what? 114. Okay? Right, what next? Total number of schools in SA. 465 plus 675. Where does 465 come from? All the what? Number of special needs schools, they add up to what? They add up to 465. So, 465 is the what? Total number of special needs schools. Right. That's what? 465. Total number of what? Special needs schools. That's 465. Right. Then now, how many full service schools do we have? We've got what? 675. There it is. So, how many schools do we have all together? We are going to add what? 675 plus 465. Which is that? 465 plus 675, what do we get? 1140. So now we've got the total number of schools in Northwest, which is what? 214. And the what? Overall number of schools SA, which is what? 1140. What do you do? Express this as what? As a percentage. How do you do that? We're going to say 214 over 1140 times 100. Why 100? Because a percentage is times 100, okay? All right, there we are. Let's calculate. 214 divided by what? 1140 times uh, 100. What we get? Okay, there we are. I'm getting 18.7%. Uh, That's the percentage that I'm, I'm getting there. 18.7%. Let's verify it again. 214 divided by what? 1140. 
what we get there, the 80s, the right? Then times what? Times 100. There we are. Okay? So there we are. That's 18.7%. 18.7%. That's what we need as a percentage. All right? Let's move on uh, to the next one. 3.5. Okay? Determine the province that lies in the meeting position of the special needs. What? School. Okay? What we need? The answer needs a province. Not the value. Okay? That lies in the media. So underline those statements. They're very important. Okay? Of the what? Special needs school. Which means that you only look at the what? Column of the special needs school. Okay? Then from there, you check the province which lies in the middle of the what? Uh, the column of that special what? Special needs what? Schools. Okay? That's what you need to know before you attempt the question. There we go. This is our this is our special needs uh, column. Okay, what we need today, we have to find the province that lies within that meekly. Median means what the meekly. Let's find out. Okay, from the top to the bottom, from the top there. One, two, three, four. Okay, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine provinces, which means uh, the median uh, province is the one which is on the 50, right? Uh, 50 what? 50 part, okay? Right, let's count now. One, two, three, four, five. This one is the median. That's number five, okay? How do you verify that? Uh, from, uh, from the what? From the top there, from the top to uh, just before that 72, how many values do you have? We've got one, two, three, four, okay? From the bottom to the top, just for that 72, how many values do we have? We've got one, two, three, four. Therefore, 72 is the weekly value. That's our median. Okay? So that median is in which province you check in there. Is what? Uh, KZ10. KwaZulu Nata. Okay? So I'm sure you were able to find out the correct value of the median. There is 72. It lies within which province? It lies within uh, KwaZulu Nata province. Question four, okay? Mathematical literacy paper one of the trial examination in 2023 was marked at 250 marks. Then as in the grade 12 B class, scored the marks listed below. Which are those marks? Let's find them out, okay? 101, 107, 121, 98, 100, 114, 103, 101, 110, 105, 102, 99, 95, 111, 115. So these are the marks that these learners from the 12B uh, Maths Lit uh, class got. Okay? What are we supposed to do? Use the above information to answer the questions that follow. Use the above information to answer the questions that what? Follow. The first one. 4.1. Determine the median. How many marks to marks? Okay. 4.2. Calculate the what? Interquarter range, which is the IQR. Again, I give you what? Two marks. Okay. So now, before we look at this together, I'm going to give uh, these two as what? An activity. You do it in five minutes for uh, both of these questions. Then from there, we'll look at them together. Find out. Okay. What you got. And what you need to do next time if you meet such questions again. Right, welcome back. I'm sure that we're able to uh, work out those questions, okay, in a correct way. 4.1, determine the what? The median. Okay? What we do, remember I said that the median is the number which uh, is found within the center of the given values, okay? Why don't you do what we need to do first? We need to what? Arrange these numbers, okay? Rearrange them. Starting from what? From the lowest value to the highest value. So I've just done that. First thing was to what? Arrange those uh, values from the lowest to the highest. So the lowest today is 95, the highest is what? 121. 
So if it's like that, I can easily what locate what my meter. Let me let us count the what the values together. How many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We've got 15 values. Okay. So where do you think our meter lies? It lies in which uh say in which part there of our our yeah, number pattern. Okay. We've got 15 values. So our meter should be number what? Okay. Let's find out. Our meter there should be number number eight. Okay. That's all. Let's check out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Eight. Okay? This is our meeting. Right. Such that on the left side of 103, the number of values we get should be equal to the number of values that are found on the right side of 103. Okay? How many values do we have on the left side of 103? Let's find out. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So there are seven values that are found on the left side of 103. How many values are found on the right hand side of 103? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. Therefore, we've just verified that 103 is what? Is the median. Okay. The number which is found at the center. Okay. That's the median. 4.2. Calculate the what? Interquartile range. Okay? We are now using that uh, arranged what? Uh, number sequence. Okay? From the lowest to the highest. So, first of all, arrange those values from the lowest to the highest. What we need to find is the interquartile range. Remember, a quarter there. A quarter is out of four. Okay? So, let's check out how many quarters do we have in this case. Okay? Right. First one. One, two, three, four. This is our first quarter. All right? Second one. One, two, three, four. This is our second quarter. All right? Let's move on. One, two, three, four. This is our, our third quarter. We have another quarter. One, two, three, but don't have the fourth one. So in this case, we've got only those three quarters. Okay? So we're going to be working with those three quarters. Okay? What is quarter one? Which is Q1. It's accurate. Is shown there, right? Our quarter one, the first quarter is what? 100. Okay? What is our Q2, which is quarter number two? That's what? 103. Okay? What is Q3, which is quarter number three? That's what? 111. Okay? Right. So now we have got all those uh, three quarters 100, 103, and 111. But what we need, we need the inter quarter what range. Okay? So what we do? I'm going to separate, okay? The quarter number three, which is the highest quarter, then minus what? Quarter number one, which is what? The lowest quarter, right? Which means it's just Q3 minus Q1, which is 111 minus 100. What do we get? We get 11. So our interquarter range is 11, okay? That's all we need to do. Right, let's go to the last question. It's question number five. What are you given in this case? The data for the number of learners at Pagani High School in 2023 is represented in the table below. Some of the values have been omitted. So, which means that those values that are omitted are supposed to make sure that you what you complete them. Calculate and then making sure that they are correct. Verify them before you make them your final answer. Okay. Let's start the table together before we attempt anything. Okay? Uh, given. The grades. How many grades do you have? We've got grades from grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, grade 11, grade 12. Okay? Then I'm given what? The total what? Number of learners in that grade. Okay? Grade 8. For females, we've got what? 1 to 1. Males, we've got what? A. It's unknown. Total is what? 122. Okay, let's correct that one first. Okay, so that we don't get confused. Uh, as move on, it's supposed to be 222, not what 122. So correct that one. All right. Then again, our page grade, you are given what? The number of females and the number of what? Males and then what? Total. Where there's an empty space, it means that we're supposed to fill in there. 
where there's an unknown variable given either as a or b or c need to also what calculate and insert the correct value for that particular what variable okay so so far we've got different variables we've got a we've got what b we've got c these are unknown right you need to what find out the values and then also we've got what the m spaces that you need to fill we've got that m space there and then another m space there you need to fill all those m spaces okay 5.1 it says calculate the missing values a b and c respectively then i given five marks bonus these marks are for free because there's no way you can get any of these questions wrong okay let's start with the first one 5.1 Calculate the missing values A, B, and C, respectively. The first one is what? Value of A. Let's find out the value of what? Of A. Like I said, this one is what? Is uh, triple two. Okay? So for our A there, what we need uh, to do? Value of A is equal to what? Triple two minus what? One, two, one. Triple two minus what? One, two, one. What we get? Okay, we get what? 101. Verify that. Use the calculator. 222 minus uh, 121. What we get there? We get 101, which means that's correct. Okay, uh, let's move on. Two marks for that one. Let's go to the next value, which is value of what? Uh, P. Where is P? Can we get P from the table? Yes, there is P. There is P. So we're looking at that uh, grade 11. We have got our men, females. We have got P. Then males are meant to have, we've got 59. Total of those males and females is what? 123. So what we do? We just simply say 123, which is the total, minus 59, which is the number of what? Males. What we get is the number of what? Females. So how many females do we have? We've got 64, which is the value of what? Of our B. Let's go to the value of C. Calculate the missing value of C. All right? So what we need to do? for the value of c right we now know that value of a is what value of a is 101 we had to calculate that one remember so we now know that the value of a is 101 okay the value of a is 101 okay so now it means that if the value of a is 101 what we need to do there we can uh, easily uh complete that what that m space there okay let's do that okay let's complete that uh row of what of males let's complete the row of males what we have we've got 101 right plus 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 95 okay plus what plus 78 what else plus uh 59 then plus what plus 33 what we get we get what a total of 366 that empty space is what? 366. Therefore, what's the value of uh, C in that case? We just add the what? Total number of what? Males, which is 366, plus the total number of females, which is what? 406. What we get is the overall total of males and females in Pagani High School. Let's do that. Let's add those two. 366 plus 406. What we get? We get 772. So this is the what total uh, number of learners in the school for both females and males. So that's easy. Okay. Now, 5.2. It says, describe the trend in the number of male learners from grade 8 to grade 12 and give a possible reason for your answer. Four marks. Okay. There's no way you can fail because these are just bonus marks. Okay. Right, let's have uh, three minutes for this question. Then from there, we take it from there as we discuss the uh, question and also find out uh, what we're supposed to do, okay? As we write down our questions. Okay, welcome back. Let's find out. It says, describe the trend in the number of male learners from grade A to grade 12, and give a possible reason for your answer. Let's check out that trend that I'm talking about. It's trend of males, okay? There is the males uh, row. Okay, what's happening? Remember that 
Uh, for grade 8, we had what? Uh, 101. Okay? Grade 9, how many are they? They're now at 95. Grade 10, how many are they? They're now at 78. Grade 11, they're now 59. Grade 12, they're now at 33. What do you observe that trend? There is a decrease in that trend. Okay? As the male uh, learners approach the next grade, the number of them, what? Keeps on what? Decreasing. Therefore, what's the trend? From grade 8 to grade 12, the number of male learners decreases. From grade A to grade 2, the number of what male learners, what, do, uh, what does it do? It what decreases. Okay? What could be the possible reason for such a trend to uh, take place? Okay? Male learners drop out. That's one of the what? Possible reasons. Okay? So they drop out as they approach the next grade. Okay? And also, can have a situation whereby the male learners, what do they do? They may be uh, failing the what? The next grade. Okay? So they are failing the next grade. Then they are forced now maybe to uh, quit school or to repeat or to what? To drop out. Okay? So these are the other possible reasons that are causing such a trend. Okay? Right. 5.3, determine the probability as a percentage of randomly selecting a female learner in this school that is either in grade 8 or grade 9. I've given three marks for that. Okay, these are bonus marks. It's just simple, right? The probability as a what? As a percentage of randomly selecting a female learner in this school that is either in grade 8 or grade 9. So I'm only dealing with what? Female learners in this case. Okay? Compared to what? To the number of what? Uh, of the total number of what? Learners in this school. Okay? But it's only in grade 8 or grade 9. What we do? Okay? Right. First of all, we'll find out the number of what? Female learners that are in grade 8 and those that are in what? Grade 9. Find the what? The total. Okay? How many grade 8 female learners do we have? Grade 8. Let's go to grade 8. We've got 121. So, grade 8, we've got 121 learners. These are the female learners. Don't forget, we're dealing with females here, right? Grade 9. Let's go to grade 9. How many female learners do we have? We've got what? 103. These are female learners. Okay? Right. What we do now? We ate the what the number of female learners in both grades? Let's say that is 101 plus uh, 103. What we get? 224. Okay, we get uh, 224. Right. So, total number of what learners that is creating eight and eight, nine female learners. What we have? We've got what? Uh, 224. Okay, we're going to say 224 learners. These are female learners over what? 772. This is the total number of learners in the whole school. And remember that this 772 includes both what female learners and male learners in the school. But we're only concerned with only the female learners in grade 8 and grade 9. And there are many 124. It says as a percentage. What do we do? Times 100. What do we get? Let's find out. 24 divided by what? Uh, 772. What you get? There we are. Then multiply it by what? By 100. Okay? How many percent do we have? That's uh, 29%. We're getting 29%. That's 29%. Okay? That's 29%. Right. There we are. So let's move on. 5.3 is done. Now it's time for the homework. I'm going to give you five minutes to cope that homework. Then I uh, are going to attempt those questions. Then as we come for our next lesson, uh, bring the homework ready. Then first of all, we'll start by what? Discussing the, the homework and then uh, looking at the uh, the next uh, day's work. So that's the homework. Five minutes, copy down those questions and the table. Okay.
Right, uh, that's all great talk, planners. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the lesson. Let's meet next time for our next revision lesson as we prepare for our prelim, like prelim, what, prelim exams, that is uh, paper one, okay? Thank you so much. Let's meet next time.